Whenever you hear the word manslaughter, you're probably picturing a gun or some sort of weapon. What you're not thinking about is a CEO of an elderly care facility being prosecuted for the death of one of the patients and residents of that care facility. A couple of years ago, I had a case that was very similar to the facts of this one. I was able to get a favorable resolution for my client, so it was done at a lower level court. But this case goes all the way to the appellate court, so let's take a look. This is a case from the appellate court in the state of California, People v. Skiff. And here's what you need to know to understand the facts of the case. We have a residential care facility for the elderly, where a person was admitted with dementia. There were a couple of issues with that. Number one, the facility did not have the permits to care for somebody with such mental state. And number two, they didn't have a care plan to care for somebody with dementia. And finally, even though there was a growing concern about the mental state of this person, they allowed him to wander off from the facility. On one of the days, he wandered off, got lost, and then he was walking across three lanes of traffic on a busy highway. Sadly, he was struck and he passed away from his injuries. The CEO of the company got prosecuted for elder abuse and manslaughter. A jury convicted him on those charges. Now we're at the appellate court level, where the CEO of the facility argues that he wasn't the proximate cause of the death of the victim. And number two, that he didn't have the required intent in order to be convicted in the charge of elder abuse and manslaughter. Here's what the Court of Appeals tells us. First, the judges looked at the care facility's history. And what they found is that this particular facility was cited a number of times by the state of California for not having proper care plans or permits in order to care for their residents. And then there was Mr. Cardenas, a 63-year-old man with really bad case of dementia. He's the resident and victim in this case. A number of times he applied in order to get entry into the facility. Every time his application was denied because after all, the facility did not have proper care plan or the permit in order to allow him to reside at this particular care facility. At some point, the CEO told the doctor to change the application and his diagnosis. And so they marked off a box no where it said dementia. And so he was permitted to get into the facility. Once there, there was a growing concern that he really shouldn't be. The nurses were asking for more help. They even asked to put a GPS device on his ankle, an ankle monitor, in order to figure out where Mr. Cardenas would wander off at night or during the day. Because there were a number of times where the nurses had to call the police in order to get him back into the facility. And then I already explained to you that sadly, Mr. Cardenas passed away after he walked off and wandered through the streets he ran across three lanes of traffic a number of times without looking left and right, and eventually was struck by a vehicle. In the state of California, involuntary manslaughter requires proof that there was a killing of a human being and that the killing was unlawful. A killing is unlawful if it occurs during the commission of a misdemeanor inherently dangerous to human life or in the commission of ordinarily lawful conduct, but which involves high risk of death or bodily harm, in which is done without due caution or circumstances. Now, courts have found that care facilities can be found liable in not exercising due care in the treatment of their residents. And in this case, if you're looking at that second part of the definition in voluntary manslaughter, what we're really dealing with is criminal negligence. And criminal negligence is defined by acting recklessly and creating a high risk of death or great bodily injury, and a reasonable person 
would have known that acting in that way would create such a risk. Here, the Court of Appeals agreed with the jury in the trial court that Mr. Skiff had the criminal negligence required in order for him to be convicted with involuntary manslaughter. First of all, a corporate officer can be held liable for the acts of his corporation or failing to control the corporate agents and his corporation, meaning that Mr. Skiff can be held liable. And then once we're looking at his conduct, Mr. Skiff as a CEO of the company permitted for Mr. Cardenas to reside at this care facility, even though he knew that wasn't lawful for him to do that because he didn't have the permits and it wasn't safe for Mr. Cardenas to be there. As we're turning to the second argument that Mr. Skiff brought to the appellate court, we're dealing with proximate cause. And usually we're talking about a foreseeability test. Is it foreseeable that this particular death would happen? And when we're dealing with foreseeability test, we're really asking whether it is a natural and probable consequence, whether a reasonable person would see it happening without other forces intervening. And in this case, there was a history of Mr. Cardenas walking away, getting lost, wandering in the streets without knowing how to get back. And Mr. Skiff knew that. And instead of getting him proper care or forwarding him to a better care facility, he allowed Mr. Cardenas to remain there. Yes, the jury found that there was proximate cause and that the death was foreseeable if you let somebody with dementia walk off from your care facility. If you were not as interested listening to me talk about this case, but more about the result and the ultimate decision that the judge had in terms of Mr. Skiff, I still thank you for watching this video. And here it is. The probation department recommended eight years in prison for Mr. Skiff, but at the end of the day, the judge sentenced Mr. Skiff to five years probation and 180 days in county jail. So six months. Now, I'm not sure if Mr. Skiff is permitted to continue to operate his care facility or to own it. I know in my personal case, that was a big issue for my client because these collateral consequences are often more important to the clients than the actual time in jail. If you were interested in this case, please click like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. So next time I post, you'll be first to know.